This is incredible. Euclid's Orchard. So here's how it goes. You are an idle observer at point zero zero on a grid. In front of you, someone, let's say Euclid, has planted an orchard of incredibly thin trees at every grid point. Now, obviously, when surveying this orchard, there will be some trees that you can see and other trees that will be blocked. But here's the cool part. If we assign each of these trees a fractional value equal to its x value over the sum of its x and y values, such that 0.11 is 1 half, 0.12 is 1 third, 0.21 is two thirds, so on and so forth, there's actually a pattern that arises between the trees that we can and cannot see. Can you see it? Pause now if you wanna figure it out on your own. Otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. All of the trees that we cannot see are blocked by the tree that they fractionally reduce down to. For example, the tree that represents the fraction two fourths is blocked by one half, and the tree that represents two sixths is blocked by one third. Now, if you're anything like me, at this point, you're probably thinking, what? No way. No freaking way. <laughs> this is amazing, but what happens if we make the orchard larger? See, I somewhat naively thought that the trees that are further out in the distance would be harder to see because they would be blocked by the ones that were closer to us. As it turns out, I was completely wrong. When we plotted a larger orchard, we could always see trees out in the distance, which I suppose makes sense in hindsight. After all, each of these trees represents some sort of fractional value, and we can see any tree whose value cannot be reduced. Thus, if this orchard is infinitely large, we'll still be able to see trees at the back. All I can say is that this legitimately blew my mind. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs> So cool.